I absolutely believe that we need governments to address the climate crisis sufficiently. Mm -hmm. What I also talk about in Saving Ourselves is that to address the climate crisis sufficiently, mm -hmm. we need to have systemic change. We cannot have these types of incremental policies like the Inflation Reduction Act mm -hmm. because they are not sufficient to get us where we need to go. No, but not. unfortunately, because of the way the fossil fuel interests had, has captured government, mm -hmm. I mean, current, like literally has captured mm -hmm. government right now in the United States, but also has privileged access to resources and power around the world, mm -hmm. not just in places like the United States. Yeah. I mean, I was just in Norway last week talking with people there, and there we also see how fossil fuel interests are very much controlling decision making so while they will implement certain types of green policies they won't stop extracting mm -hmm. or expanding fossil fuel extraction yeah. you know so given that in in my book i talk about how we need to both build a movement that can push back to power mm -hmm. because what i argue is that while we do need policy change we cannot expect that change will come from the decision makers who are in power now yeah we're going to have to change a political system to get us where we need to go. And that requires a strong movement. And to get there, what we need to do is expand the climate movement so that it builds solidarity. That's the first piece of advice that I have at the end of my book. The second is capitalizing on moral shocks, which we can talk about if you want to, and yes. that actually goes back I, I, to- I have a few questions around that too, morality, oh. yes. Okay, but I mean, but so, but then the third thing is about cultivating resilience. And, and I just would say that like the argument is that we don't all have to be activists to save ourselves. We don't all have to get arrested. We all do need to do something and we all need to build and cultivate resilience in our communities because mm -hmm. whether or not you want to change policy, which is needed, we're going to have to be there to support one another or else we're all mm -hmm. going to, you know, the climate crisis will hit us all, yeah. although not equally. Mm -hmm. And so the argument of starting with cultivating resilience though is that if you have a resilient community with strong social ties, it is a lot easier to push back to power mm -hmm. and get the policymakers to do what they say they're going to do around climate change or yeah. replace them with people who will actually do that. 